All right, let's talk polls and all these things that these days come together. And let's not talk the absolute BS story published and stuff today about the eternal polls from Labor that can't see and what they say. Let's talk about the latest political poll. And there's been a flurry of them lately. They are all telling the same story. Labor down, national holding or up. Uh, act steady. New Zealand first on, on on the comeback trail. Greens doing all right. Maori Party in decline. Change of government. They all tell the same fundamental story. Change of government. Labor, Greens, Maori Party do not get there. Uh, with Winston having committed not to support a Labor government and either sitting on the crossbenches or joining a national act government, Change of government is what it says. The latest uh, poll, Curia poll, they've been doing it a long time. So the Curia poll is the, the latest poll. What's the problem there, getting him up? We've uh, Well, if he's got video, we'll, we'll catch him on the video. I'd like to do that. If we could, Ben, we've got a bit of time. I can flap my gums. So give him a ring and tell him we'll do the video. Um, so, but all the polls, uh, unless you're getting leaked stuff from Labor like Tover O'Brien is and then publishing poppycock on stuff, they all tell us there's going to be a change of government. I, I think one of the significant things in this latest poll from Curia, and let's not got, get too obsessed about the actual numbers, we're looking at trend here, uh, is that Winston Peters, 5.5, I think, percent, the New Zealand First Party above the 5% threshold, and it would appear to me they are not, strangely enough, Taking that support from ACT, they are taking it, it would seem to me, they are coalescing or aggregating the protest votes of the minor nutter parties like Democracy New Zealand and, I don't know, the Leighton Baker Party and I don't even know if it's a party yet, the Liz Gunn Nutters Party, uh, Freemasons Party. They're all coming to Winston all right, so we've got something going on with, with the computer. We'll do that. So I think that the Winston phenomenon, uh, Winston's back, and that's what everyone's calling. Um, so this poll, I think, also indicates that we've, we've had three now that show the same trend. Maybe the tide is permanently going out for Labor. Joining us uh, from the Taxpayers Union who commissioned this research, who paid for it, so we give them a bite at the cherry. Is Jordan Williams of the Taxpayers Union. Jordan, nice to have you with us again. How are you? Good morning, Sean. Good morning. All right. Apparently, I read in stuff this morning that secret internal Talbot Polls Labour Party polling show to Tover O'Brien tells us that your polls are all wrong. That's almost a laughable response, isn't it? Uh, look, I don't want to get into a brouhaha with, with stuff over their polling day. They did a, they had um, a bit of a scrap with our pollster and my um, uh, Taxpayers Union co-founder, David Farrow, because they did a, um, I mean, they called it a poll, but it was a survey on their website. Oh, God. That you could vote multiple times, et cetera, for the Wellington mayoralty. Yeah. It appeared to propel Tory Farnow into, um, uh, in, into the mayoralty. I mean, the, the problem for the media companies is, that they actually struggle to afford the polls. Um, we sort of tipped our toe in the water because David's given it to us at absolute rock bottom price because um, he agrees with the cause. And our sort of crowdfunded uh, business model with, you know, t um, ten, literally tens of thousands of people mm. uh, tipping in to the organisation, it, it made it possible. We, we will continue for as long as um, we can afford to. I like with... The taxpayers union poll is it tends it tends to fall somewhere between the T V one and News Hub poll. Yeah it does, yeah. The other thing I, I like about it is it's is it's regular. We don't pick the exciting times to um, to do the poll. We do mm. separate polls. For example, after Ardern resigned we did a yeah. snap poll on who should replace her. But it's just the first week of every month we're in the field. And when they've had to 1,200 people, we we get it and it takes us a day or two to, you know, yeah. do the report and do all the graphic design and we just get it out. We don't... Well, it seems consistent day, with... Coming and yeah, break. and we take aside all the methodology. It seems consistent with the trends that have emerged in other polls and even that, you know, one-off... Well, the first, the inaugural Guardian poll uh, that came out, what, two days ago... Um, 
there seems to be a trend emerging, and there is no doubt, Jordan, that we we are looking on the current trends. If the polling and the trends continue, we're looking at a change of government. Well, yes and no. Um, so, firstly, obviously, that pretty pretty poor for Labor. Um, good for Lux, in, in that it's pretty unheard of to have the sitting prime minister and the leader of the opposition sitting neck or drawing the preferred Prime Minister. And that's state. with what I call um, and I remind people of the benefit of incumbency, which is generally regarded to be about 9%. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. But I think that the narrative that some are trying to pin on the National Party being dragged down by Christopher Luxon maybe doesn't hold, um, hold true. So that's, that's one thing to keep Well, I would say the a leadership thing, coup or a leadership, what do they call, tumble, the Australians call it, um, or spill, 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 a leadership spill seems far more likely in Labor now than National. Um, well, I, I, I don't... Um, Neither of which uh, are likely, yeah, that likely. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's um, highly unlikely because if, it, if it's not um, Chris Hipkins, then who? <laughs> um, yeah. I think, though, there is a real risk for the centre-right that a complacency, complacency starts to come through because looking at the... The, the hero have done quite a big write-up on this poll this morning and it seems that, look, at the centre-right's winning. Well, actually, the centre-right, meaning National and Act, mm. are at 51 seats. Mm. You only need to lose a tiny smudge from Act or National and you've got a hung parliament. Yeah, but you haven't got a hung leaders. parliament and you won't have, Jordan, because Winston, I don't think, can afford, and he's now about legacy and getting back would be a remarkable achievement, but he's a remarkable politician. He will not collapse a minority Act National Government. Well, he'd be a significant handbrake on, uh, I mean, from a taxpayer's union perspective, what we would argue is some pretty important uh, economic and uh, um, regulatory reform New Zealand desperately yeah. needs. For example, the Resource Management Act, um, but also, uh, we, you know, New Zealand is unfortunately sailing into some pretty challenging headwinds uh, economically. Uh, you, the debt clock uh, website or the official New, Ze uh, uh, New Zealand government debt clock is starting to get blown to bits. You know, we are on a dangerous path and that is going to require some tough decisions for whoever is the next Minister of Finance. And I'd put to you that the, the tough decisions that were required to be made in the early 90s would not have been possible had it been the late 90s and we had MNP and Winston okay. Peters uh, with yeah. his infamous handbrake. Yeah, all right. And what I'm saying is he's not going to bring down a centre-right government even if it's a minority. Um, all right, so that let, let's just move on from the poll, which, as I said, reflects a trend which is occurring uh, despite the breathless reporting of stuff. Let's look at some other issues the Taxpayers' Union's been into. Um, you guys kicked off or raised concerns, and I had a look at the story of the, the hooey. The stuff, though I think there's more to it than we seem, this collection of pearl-clutching, hand-wringing journalists and others at a Mariah in Auckland this week that seemed to be forming a woke consensus on covering Maori issues and minority issues. Did that yeah, concern got, you, that meeting? Oh, it, of course it does. I mean, this is the... We live in a society where the, the uh, band of acceptable opinion appears to be narrowing more and more. Mm. And now we see where if you think particular ways or particular views, for example, I have a classical view or interpretation, a black letter interpretation of the treaty. I think that's mm. right. I think that the direction we have gone around um, unfirm principles that are very malleable is a dangerous path, but most importantly is the role of lawyers rather than the rule of law. Mm. And that it's very difficult for a society to... I mean, not, not you know, the treaty is an important document, don't get me wrong. In fact, it was, yeah. it was so far ahead of its time. But where we have gone with it, I think, is a dangerous path. Now, the law society is trying to pass ethical rules that would prevent me from saying that, that I would have to, as a lawyer, uh, promote 
uh, the principles of the treaty. Mm. And already we're seeing in the media these sorts of views, uh, which, for lack of a better term, these conservative sorts of views, are simply not in. There was a mm. former member of the Waitangi Tribunal, uh, Michael Bassett, former cabinet minister also in the Longy government, who had expressed these sorts of views in an opinion piece. Mm. And he has been banned from the Herald for life. He's been banned. Yeah, Yeah, it was banned by some some 20-something lady said, you're never going to be, you're never going to be in in me again. Probably with absolutely no idea of who Michael Bassett, you know, um, Michael Bassett was. So it is it is very concerning. We know from around the tracks there's a number of uh, organisations that are unable to place advertising across NZME stuff and mm. um, the, the, the 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 Smith what, what's the newspaper right, um, the ODT um, yeah. uh, family of papers yeah now Allied Press yeah uh, that is that is very. Very worrying, and just with with one that was recently, it was in relation to a, a ad that um, Bob Lacrosse read, a family first mm-hmm. uh, outfit wanted to place. I understand that they had a yes from one of those papers, but then the computers just touch base and say you can't publish this, you can't publish this. Yeah, and it's this weird. It's cartel. Illusion. It's kind of cartel behaviour, isn't it? it? Well, it is. It, it mm. is, and, and that's what we when we learned of this meeting. I mean, look, actually, look, there's, there's two issues. Let's just take it as read that it is absolutely outrageous for the Minister of Broadcasting to be meeting with media executives to talk about how an issue was going to be mm. covered in the media. Uh, uh, within but the we election. had other government That's agencies right. here. We, there, we had the BSA there. For goodness sake, we had the Electoral Commission there. And then we had people I like the Islamic uh, Women's Council who are all, you know, that woman is a failed Labour Party candidate. It was just the woke, it was a gathering of the woke left under the auspices of some media training day. And I'm not sure who paid for that meeting on the Mariah Jordan. I've got a horrible feeling the taxpayer did. Well, I've got some, uh, my team has some official information at request and which we should get back in about four weeks time but that i didn't know that those other agencies were there i think though all roads lead back to a very concerning lack of self-awareness within our newsrooms yeah and particularly at stuff the fact that they they either have no idea of how journalism you know the fourth Mm. state supposed to work or they just don't care yeah. And I think it's the latter. They simply yeah. they believe the ends justify the means. Yeah. That New Zealand, unfortunately, politics is becoming more and more polarised. And ironically, those newsrooms that complain about it, uh, I would put to you, that is where the blame lies. That yeah, and, and TVNZ were there, RNZ were there. We didn't get invited. And I would call the platform well, but, a media organisation. Oh, you of course you are. Of course you are. But you are. The um, y- you are banging on the door of the establishment, and they want to keep that closed. You know that is uh, when I, I was going to say to you um, at the, before we, before we connected. I was thinking that how well you have done, Sean. That um, I will admit that I don't get as much time as I'd like to. I, I don't catch very many of your programs, yeah. but nearly every day I'm speaking to donors or supporters of the taxpayers' union that bring the platform up or bring up an interview that you have done. And so I yeah, think well, that, I recall... And we wanted to be... We, we didn't want to run a massive advertising campaign, Jordan, where we told people that we were relevant to them. We thought the best thing to do would be to go out and over a period of time be relevant to people. Um, and, and I am very concerned at this meeting on the Mariah Norcom. And we also find now that we have Mohan Dutta... A, the Dean of Communication Study at Massey University launching an attack on, on Carl Dufresne and the platform and indeed the Taxpayers Union as being some really? part of some right-wing cancel culture. I'll t- send you the stuff. We in, I'm sure he was up at this meeting. We invite him on today and he won't, will not front. Um, so, look, uh, poll aside and good on you guys. I mean, that's, I mean that's just... Hang on, hang on. That, that's just mental. I mean... We've, we, we, we to, to not consider us mainstream, we've, you know, one in 16 
voters yeah. are a subscribed supporter. Mm-hmm. We have more than... I think actually yesterday we had literally had 23,000 small dollar... No, so you're a Nazi. To call, call it, no, 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 no. But if anyone said that, they'll get a rip. The, <laughs> the, the, the thing is that there is this concerning tendency for opponents in politics to call each... Well, sorry, for people in politics to, call, to label their opponents or smear them as extremists or, or, or even, even fringe, or there's lots of words for yeah. it. Oh, right. It's, that is what drives the polarisation, and it should be called out. Yeah. And it seems to me, too, that mainstream media are suddenly looking with some surprise at the sort of poll results that you published yesterday. Well, what happened? Well, what happened was you weren't listening to what your readers, listeners and viewers were saying... And what they were saying was your view of the world as presented doesn't match with ours and we're not very happy with the government that you love. And this is the disconnect yeah, we've had. I think it's more... I think it's less about the government of the day. It's the it's sort of the world view that... I mean, I, I was struggling to think of a single Conservative that, that works at Radio New Zealand, but... Watching that recent docu- um, doc- docudrama um, produced by Susie Ferguson oh, yeah. on disinformation in New Zealand, I mean, they basically call New Zealand first um, 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 nah. popularist Nazis. I mean, yeah. it's, it's very... For, for a state broadcaster to be doing that... Oh, no, they're, but their they're election. digital arm, and it's clear even from that report that this woman, Megan Whelan, who run their digital arm is not a journalist bottom, um, she's an activist. And Susie Ferguson, well, she seemed to be very, very close. And, and there's a complete you, division between the real news people at Radio New Zealand and the digital news people. Well, I don't really have a problem with the fact that there, it's the lack of the self-awareness to ensure yeah. that there is conservative views as well. I mean, I, I sometimes listen, particularly through COVID, I listen to... Um, uh, uh, Radio 4, the, the equivalent of Morning Report in, in Britain, Britain um, yeah. the Today program. Yeah. And at, at 10 to 7, when we have the bird song, they have a daily prayer. Good Lord. And I mean, it's, it, it is, it, it's not necessarily Anglican. It is, it's yeah. not just Church of England. It is, they share it around and um, you have a, basically you have 60 or, or 120 seconds with um, a r- religious leader or scholar, and and it's open mic. Mm. And I just thought, I'm um, I'm an Anglican, but not particularly uh, uh, religious. But mm. I just thought how nice it was, and how that would be just uh, impossible to imagine in radio. I, can, I cannot imagine the <laughs> outrage. <laughs> totally impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jordan, look, one other story I just want to run past you because it's such classic taxpayers' union stuff. The 40,000 farewell for this head of the Ministry of Pacific Island Peoples, wasn't that a classic? Yeah, it's, it is. As I said in the media yesterday, it is a classic example of a government agency not understanding the world outside their own government agency. This is a department whose role is to advocate for often our most poorest communities in New Zealand. And it wasn't until questions started being asked that they thought a $40,000 leaving party, including drummers and photographers and, um, and special lighting and, um, you know... A, a, a lot of that was on corn beef, and up. you'd understand their cultural norms. Maybe no, that's as normal... The, as as the Auditor General said, you can have culturally appropriate celebrations without taking, he didn't quite word it like this, but without taking the taxpayer for a ride. Yeah. But I think what's interesting about this particular story is it's not just the single department and the farewell because, you know, the chief executive was leaving to lead a department just down the road, mm-hmm. uh, is that when he arrived at the Ministry of Culture and Heritage, they thought it appropriate to fly four or five members of his family to a welcome party for the new chief executive. Now, I'm sorry, Sean, but you're going up, you know, this guy's had a pay bump from about 350 to 450,000. 
even at that level, what employer flies the family yeah. to come in and work? I mean, it just, and, and I mean, even if, okay, paid it back, you know, I don't know mm. whether that was after questions were asked or not. But, but why? Why does that go through the... the yeah, how can it get system? through, it's yeah. Just, it, it, it's, it's just. Yeah. Oh, look, I suspect, I suspect even a change of government, um, Jordan, there will still be a, a need for the taxpayers' union, unfortunately, when you see. Well, when, uh, when, they stop, when they stop wasting our money, then I can happily close shop. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, uh, look, really interesting poll. Thank you guys for playing it, uh, for paying for it. And publishing it and letting everyone use it, which is really, really good. It, it adds to the it, debate. It, it, it's not me, Sean. It is the tens of thousands of New Zealanders that make the taxpayers' union possible, and we are indebted to every single one of them. Good on you. Thanks for your time. Jordan Williams from the taxpayers' union. He's a Nazi, apparently, according to many on the left, and lots of people who would have been at that Marai meeting. Uh, fundamentally, what you had this week was staff got together and... I, uh, and we got the resource to ask more questions. They got together with the Broadcasting Standards Authority, the Electoral Commission, and a whole bunch of politically motivated wannabe hand ringers, and all decided that disinformation was bad and they were the font of all knowledge. And they decided what they'll try and tell you or spin you about race issues, the Treaty of Waitangi, minority rights, freedom of speech. I'm so glad I didn't get invited because uh, I wouldn't have gone anyway. Uh, only to report on what skullduggery was was up to there.